uh, when I was a boy growing up, our family uh, would go every year uh, down to the Mornington Peninsula foreshore uh, to Rosebud. And we would camp uh, on the foreshore, you know, literally 100 metres off the beach um, for four weeks every year for many years. And so one of my great happy memories is uh, just having the freedom to just uh, run around with, I would not wear any shoes and socks for a month. Uh, and so uh, there was a lot of tea tree bush around the foreshore that we used to play in. Um, and there were, there were large sandbars would uh, emerge in the afternoons in the bay um, as the tide went out. Uh, and so you could, you could literally walk for probably four or 500 metres on sandbars before you got to the deep water. So we would play cricket on the sandbars uh, and people would join in from other campsites and, uh, and they would, um, people would be standing in the water as fielders and things like that. So um, yeah, so, and, and I used to love swimming. You know, it was, uh, uh, you, you spend hours every day just swimming in the bay. It was just, so that was one of my, uh, one of my great memories of, of nature when I was a boy. And then a few years later, my son had come back from overseas. He was now early 20s. And uh, he said, look, you know, why don't we do an overnight walk somewhere? And I thought, oh, OK, all right. So uh, we decided we go for a walk up to the Dago High Plains in the northeast Victoria. Um, so uh, we drove up to Mount Hotham and parked the car. And then you walk down into the valley and up up onto the high plains, and um, the um, and again we we hired backpacks and uh, borrowed gear and um, and I remember we we got down into the valley and that was beautiful day walking, but climbing up the the the, the major part of the the range to get up there, I got halfway up and I just collapsed. I was exhausted. And, they, uh, and uh, I think my son thought I was having a heart attack. And so he, um, he carried, he, he, he went up, took his pack up to the top, dropped his pack on the ridge, came back, got my pack, took that up, then came back and got me. And we, and we gradually got up there. And I was okay by then. I, it was just that I was so unfit that I hadn't realised that you need to train to do some of these walks. And um, so we got up there and we pitched the tent and we had enough time uh, to uh, make our meal uh, and have something to eat and it got dark. And from the, from the high plains up there, if you get a clear night, you, you look out over the whole of the southern skies. Um, and we had one of those moonlit night, moonless nights um, it was clear as a bell. And we both stood there for about 15 minutes in silence and just breathed in the wonder and awe of nature. And I knew then that I was in the presence of God. And that changed things for walking for me because um, from then on, we did lots of walks. So while my spiritual journey at Campion was unfolding as a spiritual director and a retreat giver, and my spiritual journey was unfolding in my walking, Ladato C came along. And, um, and for a number of years, I had been uh, doing my retreats annually in the bush. Uh, and for the for quite a number of years, I would go to uh, Wentworth Falls in the Blue Mountains and spend a week in silence and just walk in the forest. A and I began to think about, would other people like to do this? 
to just spend time in nature and encounter God in creation. And what Laudato Si did was that Pope Francis crystallised the theology for me of why, of how we are so interconnected and God is present in all things. And, and that gave me, I suppose, the courage to say, could we offer retreats in nature at Campion? And that's what we did. Well, my, my hope for the people who come to the conference is that they will become more aware in their heart, in their soul, of their deep connection with God in creation. I have a firm belief when you fall in love with creation, it will change the way you want to live with our earth. And, and, and so my hope is that people will deepen this appreciation and love of, of creation and the God of love who is in creation that will sort of inspire them to go back to their lives and their ministries and want to share that with other people um, and encourage new ways of being church uh, and just being alive in our world mm -hmm. to learn to live in harmony with creation, that we are one species among many. Um, and, and so that I'm hoping it has a little ripple effect around the world that will help people um, you know, to live in a different way.